All right then, so first of all, let's create our first SAS file and start writing some SAS. Then we're gonna see how to compile that into a CSS file. So I've already got open VS Code and right here, I've got an index.html file, which has no real content inside it yet. Just a head and an empty body tag. All right, so now let's create a SAS file to style our web page. So right click over here, new file, and I'm gonna call this index.scss. So this is the extension that we use for a SAS file. Now, sometimes you might see .sas as well instead of .scss, and .sas files use a different syntax to what we'll be using. Most of the time, you're gonna see .scss. So now let's add a few simple rules to this file. I'm gonna copy these from my GitHub repo where the course files are because they're just a few basic boring CSS rules, including a Google font import right here at the top. Now, this all looks the exact same as normal CSS at the minute. There's no extra SAS features and that's fine. Everything you can do with vanilla CSS, you can do in these SCSS files, these SAS files as well. And then we can just sprinkle the extra SAS features on top when we need them. For now though, how do we use these styles in our HTML file? Well, in general, browsers don't understand SAS. It would understand all of this quite easily that we have right here because it's just plain CSS that we're using here. Like I said, there's no extra SAS features added yet. But as we start to add those extra SAS features, the browser won't understand them. So this SAS file has to be compiled into a CSS file. Then we can hook that CSS file up to our HTML page. Now there's several options when it comes to compiling SAS into CSS. A really easy option if you're using VS Code as your editor is to use the live SAS compiler package. Now you can install that by going to your packages and then searching at the top for live SAS compiler and then just install it. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna see a little button at the bottom of the editor, which says watch SAS. And you can just click on that to watch your SAS file and it will compile into a CSS file. However, the way that we'll be doing it is by using a task runner called Gulp. Now, it's a little more work to set up than using the live SAS compiler package, but it offers us more compilation options, including the ability to tree shake or purge any unused styles later on, which we're gonna see later in the course. And it's also gonna allow us to use the SAS debug tool as well, which the live SAS compiler doesn't allow at the time being. So to do this, we need to install a few packages with NPM. This is why we need Node.js installed on our computer. Now to check that you've got it installed correctly, open a terminal right here in VS Code, and then you wanna type node, then a space, hyphen V, and press enter. And if you see a version number, then it's installed on your computer. If not, you're gonna to need to go and download it from node.js.org and install it. Anyway, once you have that installed, first type npm in it down here and hit enter. Now this is gonna create for us a package.json file and it's gonna keep track of all of our project dependencies, the things that we're about to install. So you can just hit enter through all of these questions right here to keep the default values. And now we should see that package.json file right up here. So next up, we wanna install those packages, gulp, sass, and a Gulp plugin called Gulp SAS. So to do that, type down in the terminal, npm install Gulp, then Gulp hyphen SAS, then SAS, and then at the end, double dash, save hyphen dev. So Gulp is the task runner, which will ultimately run our compilation task. Gulp SAS is the SAS task plugin for Gulp, which will compile our SAS. The SAS package is what the Gulp SAS plugin will use under the hood. And the save dev flag means these packages will be stored in our package.json file as dev dependencies. So now just hit enter to install all of these. Okay then, so next up we need to make a Gulp file, which is basically just a JavaScript file that contains functions for Gulp to run. And one of those functions is gonna be for compiling our SAS to CSS. So let's first create that file. And we're gonna call this gulpfile.js. It has to be called this. Now don't worry too much if you don't understand a lot of JavaScript. 
or gulp or what I'm about to code in this file. You won't need to edit it too much once we've created it. I will explain everything I'm about to write in this file, but I don't want to get too bogged down with how Gulp works, and this is going to be a simple setup that we're about to make. And once we have it coded, we can just kind of leave it there in the background to do its magic. All right then, so first things first, we need to import a few things from the Gulp package. So let's do that. So we need to import the source function, a destination function, dest, a watch function, and the series function as well. And we're going to be using all of these in this file. Next, we also need to import the Gulp SAS plugin that we installed. So let's do that. And this right here is going to return a function to us. Now, we need to invoke that using parentheses at the end, and then we need to pass in our SAS compiler that we also installed. So inside here, we can just say require SAS to get that SAS compiler, and we're passing it into the function that this right here returns. And now, all in all, this is going to return another function, which we're calling SAS in this file. We just need to invoke this later on to compile our SAS to CSS. All right then, so that's the imports out of the way. Next, we need to create a function, and that is going to be responsible for compiling our SAS into CSS. Now, I'm going to make one called build styles, since that's essentially which we're going to be doing here, but you can call it something else if you prefer. All right, so inside this function, we need to take in a source SAS file and compile it into a CSS file, then pipe it to some kind of destination folder. So we're going to use these two functions up here that we imported from Gulp. We're going to be using the source one to specify the SAS source file and the dest one to specify the destination of our output CSS file. So inside this function, first of all, we return a value and then we say source and invoke it. And we pass in a string, which is a relative path to the source file. In our case, the relative path is just index.scss. Now we might change this later on if we change our SAS file, but now that's our only source file. All right, so next we tack on the pipe method and inside that we pass a function to run. Ours is gonna be the SAS function that we import from the SAS gulp plugin at the top. So this is what's gonna compile our SAS file. So now we take our source file and then we pipe it into the SAS compiler for it to be compiled into a CSS file. And finally, we need to add on another pipe method to pipe it into the destination function. So pass in the dest function right here and invoke it. And inside here will be a relative path to some kind of folder that we want the compiled CSS file to be output into. So I'm just going to say CSS, and that means it's going to compile it and output the CSS file inside a CSS folder in our root directory. And that's it. That's all there is to this function. So then now we have this function, which is going to compile our SAS into CSS and then dump it into a CSS folder. But I also want to create one more simple function. And this is going to be a watcher function that will actively watch our source SAS file. And then when we make changes to that file and save them, it's going to automatically run this build styles function for us. So that every time we make a change to our SAS file, our CSS is going to be updated and processed automatically to stay in sync with it. So to do this, we're going to use the watch function that we imported up here at the top. But first of all, let's create another function down here. I'm going to call it watch task. But again, you can call it something different if you want. So inside this function, I'm just going to invoke the watch function that we imported. And as an argument, we pass in an array of files to watch. Now, we're just going to be watching the one file to begin with, the index.scss file, which is where we're going to be writing all of our SAS at the moment. Now, as a second argument, we need to pass in a function that we want to run when this file changes. So that's going to be the build styles function that we just made. So let's pass that in as a second argument. Cool. So now we have two functions in our gulp file, one to compile our SAS and one to watch our SAS file for changes to recompile it whenever we do change it. But how do we actually run these files? Because at the minute they're just sitting around doing nothing. Well, first of all, we need to export them from this file. So at the bottom of the file, we say exports dot default and we're going to set it equal to something. Now, we want to export and run a series of functions right here. The build styles one, first of all, 
to build the styles initially and then the watch task one which is going to watch our sas file and recompile every time we change it so we can use the series function that we imported at the top to export them in order so let's do that we invoke the series function and then we pass in the two functions that we want to run so first the build styles one and then it's the watch task one and then all we need to do now is come to the terminal and then run the gulp command and this is going to look in our gulp file at our exported functions and it's going to run each one of these in turn so first it compiles our css and then it's going to set up a watcher on our sas file looking for changes so once we've hit enter down here we can see that gulp has first of all run the build styles function to build our CSS and we can actually see that now in the destination folder we specified right here we have an index.css file and if we take a look at that we can see all of the CSS in here now at the minute it's identical to what's in this file over here our source file because like I said this is just plain CSS there's no special SAS at the minute but later on when we start to use those SAS features that the browser doesn't understand this build styles task down here is going to compile it into CSS and we'll get some rules that look a little bit different from the SAS that we write. So anyway, that's our output CSS right here. After it runs the build styles function, it then runs the watch task function right here, which is now watching this index.scss file over here. So if I was to make some kind of change in here and then save it, it's going to rebuild the CSS for us. So let's add in maybe another rule at the bottom of this file. So I'm going to say h1 like so and inside here I'm just going to do something we've not seen yet and we'll talk about this a bit more later on we're going to use a SAS feature which is nesting rules so I'm going to say a inside that and then curly braces and then color that a red and all this means is basically any a tag inside an h1 should be colored red now if I save this file we've added some SAS right here yeah it's going to recompile it then because it's watching this file so watch down here in the terminal when I save it detects that and then it runs the build styles again and now inside this file we should have another rule at the bottom somewhere which is h1 a and the color is red so now this looks a little bit different from the sas this is sas not understood by the browser but this rule is right here so finally i just want to preview this page in the browser even though there's not much in here at the minute in fact let's add an h1 which says hello ninjas like so now there should be many styles just the base ones that we added so for example the font should be this font right here that we load in which is poppins okay so if we close that down how do i preview this in a browser well i'm using a package called live server so if you search for that up here live server you're going to see it right here and what this means when we have it installed is that we can just right click on any html page and go to open with live server then that's going to spin up a local development server and it's going to open automatically in a browser for us now we can see that right here and if i refresh we're still not getting that font so let me inspect and in fact i think i already know it's because we don't load in the css no we don't in the head so let's do that as well i'm going to go to the head and we need to load in this style sheet right here index.css so let me do that i'm going to say link and then say it's forward slash CSS to go into the CSS folder, then index.css. And if I save this now and preview in the browser, now I can see the font update over here. And if we go to the style sheet in the dev tools, we can see all of these rules, including that one down here. Now watch this, what happens if I try to instead link up the SAS file? So let me say index.scss over here, and we don't need to go inside the CSS folder now either. So if I save this, we're trying to load in this one now, okay? Now, if I bring this back over here, we can see, hello ninjas, that style still works because that's just valid CSS. However, if I take a look inside this, we have this rule, right? Where the anchor tag is red inside an H1. Now this is not valid CSS. So if I was to try and add an anchor tag inside this, so a href is equal to something, We'll just do a hash for now and then place that after here if i do that and preview this in the browser notice this is not being styled red because the browser doesn't understand this sas however 
if I change this back to forward slash CSS, forward slash index.css, which is the compiled version, and preview this in a browser, then we can see it's red. All right, so now we have a workflow set up inside this gulp file, which is initially building our styles and outputting them to this CSS folder over here. And then also a watch task, which is watching our file over here. So every time we make a change and then save it, it's rerunning that build styles function, recompiling our CSS over here. So it updates and we have a live server going as well. So we can preview this in a browser, which auto refreshes when it detects that change. So everything now is kind of set up. We will make a few changes to this in the future, but not much. So for the most part, we can just kind of leave it in the background watching now. Now, if you go away and come back to this, then you're going to have to run this again by tapping gulp down in the terminal. And by the way, if you want to cancel the process, you can do click down here and press control C and that cancels out of the process. Again, I'm going to run it just so we have it watching our file in the background.